Never has a team from Newcastle won the championship, but tonight they've turned up in their thousands to see if the Jets can go top of the ladder and put the pressure on the others in the race for the plate. Only bogey team Perth stands in their way. Yes, hello again and welcome to Energy Australia Stadium. What a night in prospect. What a weekend ahead. Four teams locked together on 31 points at the top of the ladder. Only one can win the plate. It's the tightest, most exciting finish to any football season of any code in history. It all starts here in around half an hour's time. Robbie Slater is my co-commentator for uh, the Jets against the Glory tonight. Good to see you, Robbie. Good to see you, Sam. Big weekend ahead, of course. We'll be in Sydney on Sunday to, to follow that game. But all four games, something on it. Uh, it is quite unbelievable to arrive after 21 rounds with all, all four top four teams on 31 points. It's going to be a, some weekend. Well, let me ask you to put your head on the block. Who's going to win the play? Well, it's a good head to put on the block. <laughs> We've tried say. a few times. <laughs> we have tried. But as you know, tipping in this league is a very dangerous exercise. Look, if I had to go for someone, I'd probably say Queensland because I think they're in the driving seat. They're in pretty good form. They do well away from home, as most teams do in the Hyundai A-League. And I, I guess they are favourites in the box seat. But uh, as I said, it really could go either way because if you look at Sydney's game against Melbourne, that's a tough one for Sydney. Melbourne don't want to come up to Sydney and just hand it over to them. Queensland's trip to Adelaide, although I've tipped them, is a is a a dangerous one with really a Vidmar of course looking forward to the Asian Champions League so all players with something to play for you could see Newcastle really and Central Coast with the two maybe easier games although we know the record that Newcastle have against Perth but certainly Central Coast against Wellington you'd expect them to get a win so anything could happen all will be revealed over the next 48 hours. Let's reveal tonight's teams to you. Starting with uh, the Newcastle Jets, who uh, make a couple of changes. In comes Troy Hefield for his first appearance since November. In comes Jason Hoffman as well for only his third start of the season. The two to miss out, Adam DiPuzzo, who's on the subs bench, and Denny, who's got a hamstring problem and won't be involved at all. Flip over the page to uh, Perth Glory. Just the one change made by uh, Dave Mitchell. They played pretty well, of course, against Adelaide United last weekend. Nicky Rizzo comes in for Stan Lazaridis, whose uh, hamstring injury means he's not made the trip. Neither has Simon Colosimo, which uh, increases, I suppose, the speculation that he has played his last game in a Perth Glory jumper. Well, let's talk, Robbie, about uh, one or two players who may be key tonight for uh, both teams. Starting with uh, James Holland for the Jets. Really, their season has been revitalised, would you agree, since his arrival? Because not only has he given them good link-up play, he's given them goals as well. Exactly, and he's one of those you know, rare midfielders that gets you goals. He's, he's got... We, you know, we do mention Tim Cahill, of course. Uh, Tim Cahill, of course, on a different... Uh, wavelength at the moment, but certainly he has got that quality to arrive late into the box and score goals, which is, you know, it's a real diamond uh, for a coach. And look, since he's arrived, as you said, he's sort of given them given them that from midfield. Not only that, he's a very good passer of the ball. He's got a great technique. You know, nice, nice range of passing, more often than not with his right foot. But uh, obviously, he's a key player tonight for, for Newcastle. Now, talking of uh, midfielders, we had a bit of a surprise last weekend when <laughs> Jamie Coyne, the captain, was switched into the middle of the park as replacement for the aforementioned Simon Colosimo. Did a pretty good job. Yeah, look, David Mitchell obviously thinks he's got the qualities. He's got a lot of experience, Jamie Coyne. We're used to seeing him on the right-hand side of defence. Makes a lot of runs forward. But David Mitchell you know, at training and maybe with next season... Uh, the future in his in his mind. He's he's having a look at Jamie Coyne in that position. No harm done because well, there's not a lot in it for Perth. Of course, they do want to avoid the wooden spoon, uh, which is between them and Wellington, and that will be revealed uh, by the end of the weekend. Okay, well, both teams in pretty good nick, of course, at the moment. Perth edged out Adelaide by three goals to two at Members' Equity. And the Newcastle Jets, well, of course, they won the big F3 derby in front of a huge crowd against the Mariners. And one of the reasons why they got the three points was arguably the save of the season by their shot stopper, Terrific. Ante Kovic. Mm. John Prince cross. Chance here, what a save from Kovic. Superb stop from the keeper. We haven't had that real punch or we haven't really gone a couple of games where we can say we've, we've dominated teams and uh, played really well. So it has been up and down. We've, we've, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of our victories have been grinding the result out. So, um, you know, we have got the personnel in the squad to, to um, put in good performances. It's just a matter of everyone getting confident enough and uh, you know, doing that little bit extra. 
I still believe that I've got a lot more to offer. Um, I, I never uh, lose faith in myself improving all the time, and I still think I'm at an excellent age to, to keep improving. So, um, but uh, this year I've, I've, I've got the consistency. Um, yeah, I've got a huge amount of confidence, and uh, it's been going well so far. But uh, you know, I don't rest on my laurels and think uh, I'm doing well enough, and I can relax. I, I always want to improve every week. I'm probably the wrong person to ask that. I, I, I was hoping that it wouldn't be. I, I had a lengthy discussion with Graham Arnold on uh, when I did come back to Australia about whether it would affect me, and um, you know, all the information I got was positive. Um, you know, obviously, I think it has affected me somewhat. Um, I've, I'll never give up. I'll never stop working, uh, do the best I can, and uh, I'm, yeah, just want to keep playing well and, and prove myself to be the best goalkeeper in Australia. And, I uh, want to make the job difficult on the, the people selecting the team to, to not pick me. So, um, uh, you know, obviously I, I'd say it would help if I was still in Europe, but um, I don't think A-League players should be punished, uh, goalkeepers or players. Um, I think there's qualities here and uh, I, I still believe I've got quality to, to do a good job for Australia. If something comes up, obviously I'll have a look at it, but uh, I'm 32 years of age now and I've got four or five uh, good quality years left. Uh, if an opportunity was to arrive, it'd have to be something worthwhile to, you know, get my family to move again and, and ship across. I've got a young daughter now, so uh, I wouldn't be going there for, for something that's uh, not going to be worthwhile. So it'd have to be something interesting and uh, something I'd enjoy doing. And on top of that, my family willing to, to do it again. Well, at this stage, uh, family life, my little daughter, uh, she's everything to me. Uh, she's only 16 months old and uh, basically come home every day and come home to her and play around, take her for a walk, so that's the biggest motivation in my life right now. I've um, got quite an attention to detail around the house, whether I'm, uh, maybe it's a, an issue of uh, travelling around Europe so much that, you know, whether it's packing my bags, everything has to be spot on, folded properly, I'm, uh, you know, checking things on the internet, if I'm going to buy a new camera, I, I check every single little detail. Yes, obviously the perfectionist Ante Kovic, and that shows through in his goalkeeping, Robbie. I'll tell you what, if there's a better keeper in Australia at the moment, not sure about outside, but yeah. certainly in this country at the moment, I'm yet to see him. No, he's been fantastic for Newcastle this season, and that save he made uh, against that point-blank header from Johnny Aloisi was certainly the save of the season, <laughs> unless we get something better uh, uh, over this weekend. But certainly uh, he is in uh, well in the sights of Pim Verbeek, and rightfully so. Yep, I'm sure he will be starting against Qatar on February the 6th. Well, we think so. You're anyway. sure? We shouldn't second guess You're Pimba sure. Bank. <laughs> now, let's uh, remind you of the league ladder as it stands at the moment, heading into this final round. Newcastle Jets, of course, their top four place is secure, but a win or a draw tonight will take them to the top of the table for the first time this season. If they stay there, of course, it will be a first title of any kind for this city, which is uh, perhaps a strange thing to say for such a footballing town. Perth Glory, well, their motivation tonight, of course, is to avoid the wooden Spoon at the moment, they're level on points with Wellington Phoenix with a slightly better goal difference. Let's hear from the man they call Dutchy One now. He's talking with Gary Burchett. Gary, you're the first of four teams vying for the Premier's plate. Do you feel that playing the opening game gives you an advantage over the other three teams? Ah, look, I think at the end of the day, you've just got to try and go out there and, and do what's best uh, for the team as far as getting three points. Um, you know, we can't control what's going to happen between uh, Queensland, Central Coast and, and Sydney with their, with their respective games. So uh, we need to go out, uh, get the three points and uh, worry about the rest of it later. You come up against your bogey side who you've beaten once in eight matches. Any reason why there's such a tough nut to crack? Uh, look, I think um, the matchups uh, between us and Perth, I think they probably suit them quite a bit, um, and maybe the style that we play. Uh, so we've we've rejigged a little bit tonight uh, to try and maybe uh, counteract that, and uh, we'll see what happens. Newcastle scored the least goals in the Hyundai A League this season. If you were to take the title of premiers, would you be somewhat surprised? Oh well, I mean the table doesn't lie. I mean we're on 31 points. Uh, for us to get three points tonight and then puts the pressure on all the other teams that are on the same score, uh, same point. Sorry. Um, I think it, uh, if if we win the comp, uh, it's all due to the fact that uh, we deserve it. So um, yeah, we haven't scored as, as many goals as some others, but uh, we definitely haven't conceded as many as either. Thanks, Gary. Thank you.
Yes, Gary Van Egmond with Gary Birch. Dutchy Robbie won. with uh, Dutchy won, exactly. We've talked about in the past um, the lack of goals and support to Joel Griffiths, but maybe one of the reasons why they are still mm. up there challenging for the title has been the solidity of their defence, and in particular this partnership between Andy Durante and Jade North at the back. What yeah, have you made been, of that this Well, season? it's been pretty good, and uh, they're second behind Queensland, only considered 20 goals, Queensland 19 goals, but they've done, done quite well. And uh, with Joel Griffiths' goals, we know how important they've been, but certainly they're Andrew Durante can see how important he's been. I'd be surprised if they let him leave. We've uh, heard of rumours that he might be off to, to Wellington, but I think he's done very, very well. Of course, he has come back from a terrible injury, Andrew Durante, and he's had a terrific season, as has Jade North. I, I was going to ask you, do you think Jade North has, uh, has grown a bit as a player due to being given the captaincy this year? He seems to have thrived yeah. on that extra responsibility. He's become a real leader for me, and uh, not sure about the hair, too. It probably looks good on him. Certainly got more hair than me at the moment. Better than yours. But, uh, better than mine, yeah. <laughs> I, I would have thought so. But you can see also that what I like about Jade North is he doesn't panic at the back either. He's pretty good on the ball. He likes to play out. Uh, he rarely, only when he has to, plays it long. And so I think that that understanding they've had, Durante and Jade North, has certainly been a key to what, to why they are sitting on 31 points. OK, and uh, let's underline how well the Jets' defence has played this season. Of course, uh, we shouldn't uh, exclude Ante Kovic, who we've already talked about, nor Tarek Eldridge <laughs> or Matty Thompson. They'll get very upset with us uh, if they do. OK, well, we're not too far away from kickoff here at uh, Energy Australia Stadium. The crowd's starting to build up as they file their way in. We asked them a very important question, given recent speculation. Would they be annoyed if the grand final was to be switched to Sydney, that even despite Newcastle winning the staging rights. Here's what they had to say. I think it would be outrageous because we've been here every week, week in, week out, to support our team and this is where it should stay. Well, I think it's uh, kicking the uh, guts for Newcastle and also for Con Constantine, who spent millions of dollars supporting Newcastle and I think it's the wrong decision for the FFA to uh, do. That'd be very disappointing. The, uh, there's a lot of fans come here every week, rain, hail or shine, sit up on the hill and uh, if they uh, had it in Sydney, we'd be very disappointed. I'd still go, go there in support of the Newcastle, but there'd be a lot of families that, 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 that won't be able to make the trip. I think taking it away from Newcastle is a real slap in the face for you know, a club that's really got their leg off the ground. It wouldn't stop me from travelling down there um, at all. I mean, it's all for the love of the team and the love of the sport, really, and to support the guys no matter what. Um, yeah, so definitely still go down and see them. The Jets have had plenty to cheer in recent weeks. Dutchie's got them back on track with some help from Dutchie too. Now can Joel's goals help them push on and claim the Premier's plate? It's the Newcastle Jets against Perth Glory as the race for the title builds to a climax here on Fox Sports. Yes, the final round of Hyundai A-League action. The top four against the bottom four, of course. But tonight, the Jets can steal a march on the other three clubs still vying for the Premier's plate. That's if they can see off Perth Glory, which, of course, has proved rather tricky in the past. Well, this fine footballing town will simply explode with pride if the Jets can finish off the job. The city that produced Australia's first ever overseas export in Jimmy Jackson, its first real overseas star in Craig Johnston, and the nation's finest ever female player in Cheryl Salisbury has a yawning gap in its trophy cabinet. Never before has a Newcastle club finished top of the pile, but they've got a great chance to do so this weekend. The scenario, win and wait. Let's take a check on tonight's team news. Newcastle Jets making two changes. Troy Hearfield is in for his first appearance since November. Jason Hoffman for just his third start of the season. The Brazilian midfielder Denny is out with a hamstring problem. Adam Depuzzo drops down to the bench. And our best wishes, of course, go to Stephen Labert, who's out for the rest of the season after rupturing an Achilles at training this week. Just one change made by Perth Glory coach Dave Mitchell, and it's enforced as well. Stan Lazaridis has got a hamstring injury, so Nicky Rizzo comes in on the left-hand side of midfield. There's no place either in the 11 or on the bench for Simon Colosimo. He hasn't travelled, and it looks increasingly likely he's played his last game for Perth. 
Well, Gary Van Egmond took the Jets to a preliminary final last year. Can he go one better this time around? A top two finish would help. See if his team pushes themselves closer to that goal in a few minutes. We're all set for go at a very wet Energy Australia Stadium. Our referee tonight is Michael Hester. And there's a lot of expectation around the Hunter that the Jets can finally push on and maybe, just maybe, claim that elusive piece of silverware. The old Adamstown club won the National Cup back in 1984. Nobody from this city, in whatever guise, has ever lifted the championship or indeed the minor premiership. But it's a real possibility tonight, Robbie Slater. It is, and they can put pressure on those other three teams on 31 points. And it's surprising that no one, no team here in Newcastle in the football code has, has lifted a trophy because it's such a hotbed for the code. So much support up here in Newcastle and the surrounding areas. They've got a chance to put pressure on those other three teams in the first game of this bumper weekend we've got ahead of us. Well, the uh, wet weather has perhaps cut the crowd down a little bit, but it's still a very healthy turnout, as it has been uh, throughout the campaign. And they'll make uh, plenty of noise. Perth, though, are not just here to make up the numbers, that's for sure. They've got the wooden spoon to avoid, of course, and the Perth bench are claiming that that should have possibly been a foul on Nicky Rizzo. Referee waves play on, and here go the Jets. Right at the crucial moment. Right at the crucial moment, the airfield. And that just shows you how much rain there has been up here in Newcastle. The pitch looks in fantastic condition. You see there, just takes his eye off the ball. He's watching Hayden Fox and he's just, oh, he's just literally slipped. Sniper in the crowd, they call that one. Well, we did have a little walk on the pitch uh, pre-game, and it was a bit greasy, a bit slippy. I'm sure the players have been advised as to which footwear to use but it's that sort of a night on the hunter it's been wet all week and it's such a big night for the newcastle jets that's uh, a foul against matt thompson who's been involved in the soccer training camp this week pimba bake spoke to us on uh, total football about it and i think he's been quite impressed by uh, the newcastle's right-footed left back yeah, well, look, it is a problem area for the Socceroos, the left side. He performs well on that left-hand side. But there would be one concern at international level. It is nice to have a left-footed player in that position. I mean, of course, Matt Thompson does that. Now Joel Griffiths in behind for the first time, only briefly, but the threat was there. You see the conditions again, ball skidding off the surface. That's the run he loves, though. That's the inside right channel where Joel Griffiths always looks to get into. He anticipates the ball, whether it be a long ball like that one, and he plays off the shoulder of the defender and does find that many times throughout the game. But just on that left-hand side, Matt Thompson does come in on his right foot. I think at international level, that is of concern. Three minutes play, still goalless. Perth, of course, defending. As we said before, a 100% record at this venue. They love playing here. Here come the Jets, though. First opportunity. Oh, and it took a deflection and almost drifted in behind Jason Pekovic and into the net off the boot of Jason Hoffman. No, they didn't know where that was going. Pekovic scrambling across his goal line. Here the ball comes out to the right. It gets it out of his feet, Hoffman. He's just trying to dink this to the back post. Jason Pekovic lost that one and not far away from dropping in at the back post. Ferranti's darted towards the near post. Oh, and it's volleyed wide by Joel Griffiths. Came at him very quickly. Oh, it did, but you wouldn't have wanted it to fall to anyone else for Newcastle. Came at him quick, couldn't adjust his body enough to guide it into the far corner. There's a lot of pace on this ball. Comes off Hayden Fox. You'd expect him to at least hit the target there, Joel Griffiths. The form is in. Here comes the ball, swung in, comes off the Perth defender. I don't think it was Hayden Fox, in fact, but Joel Griffiths, you'd expect him to hit the target. In fact, I think it came off Julevich. Well, Joel Griffiths has scored nine of Newcastle's last 14 goals. And already, a couple of warning shots across the bow. Once when he got in behind Dino Djurbic. 
And that last chance where he volley wide of the targets. Now, Rukovica's pace will cause every defence problems. Rukovica! Oh, Andrew got Paul Paul watching in a little bit square. Rukovica showing his pace. There's the pitch playing again. This time it was Spencer slipping. Good open game in the early moments. Seleski's ball. It's nice and sharp, isn't it? The surface is, you know, it's there to play good, good football, but the pass has got to be precise, but you can zip it around. Just there, Spencer, Noel Spencer slipping this time. It's two players from Newcastle we've seen slip. It's wondering what choice of footwear they've got, what they've made. Here's Griffiths in behind again. Awkward bounce for him. Side netting. But he will get a corner. Must have taken a touch. Again, ghosting in behind. Luckily for Perth, Roy Hayden Fox did get something on his header. They just missed controls at Joel Griffiths, but a real snapshot on the turn. 11 goals this season for Joel Griffiths. Looking to, of course, break the Hyundai A-League record for the home and away series tonight. Held by Danny also. Another decent delivery. Another corner. Good balls in there from James Holland. It's the second one. Whips him in with pace, nice and flat. Not too flat, because he does beat that first man. Again, Durante tries to dart towards the near post. It goes deeper instead. And Pekovic just plucks it out of the air. And here field at the back post. Good variation. Quality set pieces from James Holland. That time he went to the back post, Hearfield starting from the penalty spot, pulled off to the back post, couldn't give any power on the header. It's something I felt that in spite of this very good season, this third season of the Hyundai League, it had a few flat points, but the last month has been absolutely terrific, but one place where maybe we'd like to see a bit more quality in season four, or even in the playoffs looming, is set pieces. So important in modern day football. Well, there's an interested spectator. We've got Dutchie 1, Dutchie 2, and maybe there's Dutchie 3 in the stands tonight. Pimba Bank centre screen with uh, Rob Barn to his right, and further along, Graham, Von Graham Arnold. Arnold. I saw uh, in a magazine this week that they're, they're running a competition to try and find uh, a nickname for Pimba Bank. We've had uh, Aussie Pim, and the one I like was Hus Light. Slight. <laughs> well, let's hope it is. Let's hope it's not goose heavy. This is Hanwell. Ball was out, wasn't it? So, uh, certainly looking at Pinver back there, certainly clocked up some kilometres watching the games and. Very interesting period ahead, which looms ahead for Australian football. Qualifying for 2010 South Africa. I can tell you, Verbeek is uh, not the only Dutchman watching from the stands tonight either. A couple of scouts here from FC Twente in the Eredivisie. Checking out potential recruits. Same of uh, the A-League is... Spreading far and wide at the moment. Thompson. Another telegraph that one. Easy for Tyler Simpson. He too is careless with possession. Noel Spencer less so. Now Tyrek Elridge. Chance to get the motor running for the Jets. Showed a bit too much of it to Nikolai Topper Stanley. Oh, he did, but it's good intention from Tarek Elrod. So often he gets that ball and he you know, takes a touch and then tries to cross it from you know, 30 metres out from the byline. That time he went on and took on Topper Stanley. OK, it didn't come off this time, but that's what you want your man to do out there in that position in the final third. Foul by uh, Dino Djurvic on James Holland. 
Jets gets things moving quickly again. Thompson. Holland takes control, takes charge, takes his time. And eventually it takes a touch on the edge of the six-yard box. What a great first touch from James Holland to take him into that position. Then he was just outnumbered. What a player he looks to, looks to be. What a future he may have. Well, just playing in behind the strikers, or the striker as well, seems to suit him down to a tee. And I can tell you that uh, it's perhaps because of the form of James Holland that uh, the Jets have confirmed this week that uh, Denny's services will not be retained next season. And they've also confirmed that uh, Mario Jardel is uh, about to leave the club too. So really the South American experiment, if you include Jorge Dravandi, has, uh, has failed, you could say, for the Jets this time around. Well, definitely, without doubt. It's been a, a big failure. And... Uh, you see the possession there, Noel in charge, the Newcastle side, but uh, respect to imports, no problem, you bring them over in their quality, big names or what Melbourne did with Fred and even Hernandez in the last month has been excellent, if they're not as good as what we've got here. Holland almost got there. That's, his, that's what he's got hasn't he, he's got that gift. Getting into the box, midfielder scores goals. Makes a late run, just a touch there and surely would have scored. Just on the subject of uh, imports, I can tell you that uh, the Jets are about to finalise the signing of uh, a Korean, Song Jin Kyung. And he's uh, an attacking midfielder too, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Good to see A-League clubs trying to go and sign Asian players. Well, it doesn't matter where they're from, does it? As long as they're quality and they're good. It doesn't, but it makes yeah. perhaps more sense now that Australia uh, is in Asia. in Asia. It does, and don't listen to what some people may tell you, that's a clear foul, foul and will be yellow card. Shirt pulling from Hoffman. But I don't believe what some people tell you, but that they have to come from South America. Of course, we want them from there as well. Particularly the Janinos. I mentioned Fred before, Hernandez. But, uh, certainly Asia is a place as well. It's a clear Hoffman. It's silly, really. Neat, neat stuff from Nik Nikolai Topless Stanley. Stanley, one of those uh, very much in the frame with uh, Tim Verbeek. Graham Arnold too, of course, the Oli Roos now. Harwell, using his strengths, goes down inside the box and there are appeals not only from Harwell, but the Perth bench too. Michael Hester is not interested. Well, he was very clear in his decision. Well, there's some shirt tuck in there, possibly from both players. Yeah. Six of one, half a dozen the other, and referee deciding that Matt Thompson coming across. Rukovic took that in his stride superbly. Yeah, good play from Rukovic, a nice and positive, good little trick, little body swerve, and ball whipped into the far post. We talk about Rukovica and other players and the threats for Perth, but he's a real handful, Jamie Arnold. Jade North getting the Jets out of a bit of a hole there. Been very steady all season, the Jets skipper. No nonsense, unfussy sort of a player. You only really notice him when he's not there. Jade North only one yellow card this season. Shows you how good he's been. How effective. Newcastle, second best defence in the league. Only one goal behind Queensland. 20 conceded. Here's the 
as the uh, Jets bench sharing a joke. The uh, players on the list today, Ben Kennedy, Adam DePuzzo, Stuart Mishalik and Scotty Tunbridge. No Adam Griffiths, of course, tonight. He is uh, suspended. His uh, brother Joel has been struggling a wee bit this week with uh, calf injury, but no question that he was going to start. Here's the Jets' talisman leaping for that ball. Beaten by Fox, Jamie Coyne. That's the right idea. He's trying to set Seleski away down that uh, right-hand side. Spencer and Coyne going for the 50-50 ball. Robinson's pass was a hospital one. Holland comes away with it. Now the Jets can break. Joel Griffiths. So dangerous. Yeah, just didn't get it, get it right, did he? He's going for that far corner with his left foot as he cut inside. Perth have really haven't settled into the match. They've had a couple of near things. Harnwell in there with a claim for a penalty. Wukovic has looked dangerous a couple of times, but haven't been able to get Seleski or Nicky Rizzo playing in those wide positions into the game as yet. No question that uh, Gloria, I don't mean any disrespect to Nicky Rizzo at all, but uh, they do miss Stan Lazaridis when he's not around. Very clever, very intelligent football, as well as being a damn good one. into the channel but it's probably got a bit too much on it for James Holland not sure about the haircut <laughs> innovative design though I'm sure Gary Van Egmond has had uh, laugh and a joke about it shows his commitment to the club I suppose it's not the first time he's done it actually he had the uh, the full badge cut into his hair earlier on this season Tempo's just slowed a little bit after that uh, very positive start, particularly by Newcastle, and not exclusively so. Andy Durante with uh, the ball into touch. He's been training with the Socceroos as well. In fact, uh, nine of the Jets players have been uh, involved either with Pimba Bake or Graham Arnolds. This is Julbich under pressure. Good pressurising by Griffiths and Hoffman. Pressing very high up the pitch, Newcastle, as you would expect. Not allowing Perth to play out, forcing them to go long. The only danger with pushing high up against Perth with this current structure that David Mitchell has is Rukovic, is very quick. Just got to be caught, got to be careful not to get caught square. Durante got caught once. That's good work from... Jade North as he saw that ball going long, dropped off. Matt Thompson cutting, tucking in from the left-hand side. This is Elrich. Shrugs off for his own, it's a good ball. Again into the channel. Joel Griffith's pace gets him there. A good idea. Again, it's that right right side isn't it it's where he loves to go good pace he's got it out of his feet see it too close to Petkovic Seleski needs skills he's got quite a few of those in his uh, armory 
Billy Seleski. Rizzo, top of Stanley, wanted the ball played first time. Rizzo cuts inside. Well, just not quite coming off in the final third at the moment for the glory. Newcastle a bit short on numbers as they try and counter. This is Joel Griffiths, very clever ball. Holland, and he gets the free kick too. That was great work by Holland and Joel Griffiths, working in a very tight space with only each other for company. And they managed to get the set piece. Yeah, nice and clever play, just a little toe poke, the back heel from Griffiths. And the clear foul as he stumbles, eventually falls over. James Holland. A familiar chant of come on Newcastle brings around Energy Australia Stadium as James Holland prepares to take this free kick. Plenty of bodies forward for the Jets. Didn't clear the first man and they're driven just wide by Noel Spencer. Oh, it's a great strike. Hits it first time on the volley. Set up nicely for him. Doesn't go a long way past that far post as it skips off the surface. Pekovic was nowhere near it. Very unlucky. Well, he won goal of the year in round one for a strike against Perth Glory. That was probably a little bit closer in. He wasn't too far away from his first Jets strike. What's your thoughts, Robbie, on uh, this Ferrari that's erupted about where the grand final should be played. Con Constantine says if Newcastle win the hosting rights, he wants to play it here. We'll come back to that in a second. This is Bridge. Now Thompson. Past Tyler Simpson. And again. Decent ball in. Joel Griffiths. Easy as you like. It's a new record for the Jets' ace marksman. 12 goals in the Hyundai A-League, and the Jets are goals to the good. Great play down the left-hand side from Matt Thompson. He cut inside in his right, shaped across it, went back onto his left, just dinked it to the back post. And who else? The leading scorer in the competition. He picks up the ball here. He cuts inside onto his right foot. He gets a little bit of contact there. Swivels back onto his left, that is the perfect cross from that position. He just stands it up to the back post. Here he goes, cuts inside. Tyler Simpson, swivels. Look at that for a cross. Won't get an easier one than that from Joel Griffiths. He finds that to be in the right place at the right time to get his 12th of the season. Yeah, a round dozen for Joel. At times he's outrageous, most of the time he's outstanding. And what's clear, he is now, in terms of goals, out there on his own this season. Take a bow, Joel Griffiths. Count Perth strike back immediately. Rizzo's free kick had good shape to it. Get a second go. Rukovica. Oh, too not, far away. Not too far away. Great skill. On the turn. Good technique. Watch this. One touch there. Sits up nicely. Swivels. Oh, Kovic was worried about that one. Great play from the youngster. Tell me your thoughts on this stadium round. Well, there's a case for both, isn't it? Look, uh, the rules were there. Uh, you win the, the right to, to have the grand final, whether it be Newcastle or Central Coast. There is an argument, certainly for them, as Petkovic gets himself in two minds, uh, for them to host the grand final at their ground. But there is the other side of the coin, where the league... You know, for credibility and for the way it's progressing is to have a big stadium for the biggest stage and the biggest stage is the grand final Troy Hiffels got himself a yellow card so the two youngsters brought in today have both been put into Michael Hester's notebook Hiffield and Hoffman
I think the unlucky thing for Newcastle, I guess, and the Central Coast, Adelaide would be in the same boat, Perth as well. We'll see the challenge. Is that you know, Queensland, Sydney, Melbourne have very, very big stadiums and stadiums fit to, to host grand finals. This is Thomas Stanley. Dino Djorbic just got ahead to it. In fact, he was actually claiming a handball there against uh, Jets defender. Michael Hester again, not interested. This will tell us more. Well, it did strike the hands, no question. Guys on the ball there. The ball certainly struck the hand, but he's saying that he knew nothing about it. Well, a talking point. I'm sure Perth will have a different view on that. Well, penny for your thoughts. Queensland, Sydney, Central Coast Mariners. The scoreline as it is. Jade North had to be quick with Rukovica sniffing around for the chance, and he was. Sure, there'll have been a few nerves around all four of the clubs on uh, 31 at the top of the ladder this week. Such a huge round of matches. Seleski. Spreader from Perth. Hayden Fox. Robinson. And it's... Uh, just breaks down as it approaches that final third for glory. Yeah, well, it broke down that case because Bill Seleski had come in from his right-hand wing, or right side, in search of the ball, right across to the left-hand side, and the ball was transferred out there. There's James Robinson found himself completely isolated with no one outside of him. Dave Mitchell. Mitchell, yep, the uh, glory coach. I have to tell you in a slightly humorous way that he is the first homeless coach in the Hyundai A-League. He's just been chucked out of his apartment this week. He unfortunately allowed the lease to run down and uh, the new owners have moved in and said they wanted him out. So he's had to move house. He's staying with uh, friends at the moment. He's not quite homeless. But uh, if you'll pardon the pun, the uh, big issue for Mitch at the moment is that his team is a goal down. Troy Hairfield, Thompson, Bridges come short. Spencer is square, and one sighter, he'll have another. A bit more disappointing than his last effort. He used to be a regular scorer, didn't he, Noel Spencer, in the first season of the A-League for the Mariners? He certainly did. Certainly been more difficult to come by. He talks about that wonderful goal. He just screws that one across, didn't let it allow it to come across his body enough. He's been shown a lot of faith. Gary Van Eckman is resting with Charlotte at the time. He's preferring Spencer at the moment. He did just change that in the second half last week. Noel Spencer coming off, I think, around the 60th minute mark. Charlotte's had a big season, of course. The only ruse, a lot of travelling. Never seems to have uh, really recovered either from that appendix operation. Knocked him a bit for six. As the uh, rain starts to come down, only lightly at the moment in the Hunter. So is Thompson. Just had a bit more zip, of course, to the already greasy top. Tarek Elrich. Oh, and uh, he picked up Bridge. He gets himself beautifully out of a tight space there, Mark Bridge. Squared by Holland. Spencer. Nice football. Thompson. I think he was going for goal then. <laughs> Thompson. A bit ambitious. Well, 
not uh, top of the passing efficiency stats for nothing, Newcastle. They do at times play some very attractive stuff to watch. Move the ball around almost effortlessly at times. Gives Hearfield a bit more to do. Almost disappeared off the radar, uh, Troy Hearfield, over the last couple of months. Had a little uh, dip in form that Gary Van Egmont says he expects from time to time with young players. A bit too much room in these areas. That's not a bad try either by uh, young Jason Hoffman. Firth will have to close down those gaps, that's for sure. A decent strike, gets it out at his feet, goes past. Pretty static Perth defence and decent strike with the left foot. Comfortable save in the end from Jason Pekovic. And Egmont playing a slightly different shape than normal tonight. He's gone 4 3 3 as opposed to the usual 4 2 3 1. It's only a subtle change, but. At the moment, it appears to be working. I guess he's wanting to just pin them back, Perth. With Hoffman and Heerfield pressing onto the fullbacks. Not allowing them to play out. They pushed really high up the park as well. Zaleski. Robinson races after it and uh, the glory will get themselves a corner. They've had little going forward. Both, and that was a good forward run from Robinson. Did well to get the ball in the end. Into corner. Off uh, Tarek Elrich, maybe just touched the arm, but again, I'm not sure it was uh, intentional. 32 minutes play, jet to goal to the goods, Rizzo to deliver, and a free header by uh, Dino Djulbic, but Kovic will now try to get the Jets going again, and he's just put too much purchase on that clearance. Had an awful lot to do, uh, Ante Kovic, arguably the most informed keeper in the A League. There he is, just the one full international cap against Bahrain, February 2006 for Australia. I'm sure he's about to add to it. gone on a bit too long for the referee's liking and Nikolai Topol Stanley is going to receive a yellow card for that back chat. And he's still going, it'd do wise to zip it. That's unlike him. Certainly I think someone well in the reckoning from the Pim Verbeek, particularly in a more defensive lineup, possibly away from home. And look towards China the second game. Home, you'd expect him to play attacking left side of plays in the left back role. That's well, a top of stand that can do that, it's not really his forte. Bridge slips it through. Holland. Here's Jason Hoffman again. Room on the edge of the box for Newcastle. It's closed off now. Oh, that took too much time. Oh, and a slip by Durante, and Rukovic's pace could take him away here. Nikita Rukovic. Uh, Straight into the midriff of Kovic, and he knows he should have done better. Yeah, he could have taken it, could have taken it further. He's quick enough, just get his body in between, particularly Jade North, who was coming back. Durante was gone, mistake by him on the halfway line. We talked about his pace. When you push up to the halfway line, the danger of Rukovic are in behind. Really should have done better. That ball going straight at Kovic. Took it first time. Here's the spaces appearing again. 
Closed off at the pass, though, this time by Nikolai Topper Stanley. Hasn't got that much time, Hoffman. A chance to Rukovica is Hoffman that hesitated, I think, to take a shot. Started with the Perth counter attack. Lovely turn by Bridge. Very aware of what was around him. It's an awful pass, though. Completely wasted. It was a beautiful turn, Mark Bridge. Hasn't real, really found his form of late. And Rukovica, what a chance for him. Breaks away, Durante gets caught square. Mistake from Durante as well. Look, he can take another couple of metres there at least. He's got the pace, he's in behind. Forced Kovic to do something. Kovic really had nothing to do. Ball hit straight at him. Uh, three chances Nikita Rukovica has coughed up. Not all of them as clear cut as that. Now, Elrich has been caught by Nick Rizzo and the Jets bench on their feet. And uh, Michael Hester is going to have to calm this down, otherwise, it could get a bit ugly here. Well, they're all joining in. It's handbags, really, but uh, the initial tackle was late. It was late, but it's, I mean, it's hardly worth this reaction. Tarek Elrich, I think, is nearly up on his feet already. It's not a good challenge, but we've seen worse. It certainly shouldn't be worth a red card. It's certainly late. He's caught him with a trailing leg, hasn't he? Yeah. I think the intent is for the ball. It's a straight red. Well, I think that's a bit harsh, I have to say. Well, I can tell you, Simon, he had a yellow out. And I'm not sure whether we've captured that, but at the beginning, when the tackle went in before the melee, the referee had a yellow card out of his pocket. He then put it back in his pocket. The melee ensued, and then a red was pr produced. Now, look, I don't know if it's just me, but from the evidence in the replay, I think that is very, very harsh. Well, there's no doubt it was worth a card. It was just which colour Michael Hester showed. It's only our opinion, but maybe he's a bit unlucky here. Well, Look, it is challenge. late. Oh, it's late, but it's not It's not malicious. Tarek Elrich was up pretty quick. He's not hurt. It's Noel Spencer that comes over and has a few words, and Durante comes and gets involved in it. It's the Perth players and Robinson and that come to protect, but I'm not sure if the referee's been influenced on that, but he certainly had his yellow card out at the start. And the tackle was made. He ran from toward from the halfway line from the kickoff spot towards where the tackle happened and he had his yellow card in his right hand. Well, the Jets are incensed. Perth feel hard done by. Well, the upshot of it all is that uh, Perth already a goal down and now a man down too. Fourth red card of the season. Dino Djordovic still can't believe it. So a bit of that reorganising possibly is going to have to be done here by Dave Mitchell. Well, it's great news for Newcastle, of course. One nil up. Perth go down to ten men. Perth is their bogey team. Newcastle have never, David Mitchell looking on, wondering what he's going to do. Or discussing what he's going to do. But remember, Newcastle have never, ever, forget about a win. They've never ever taken a point of Perth glory on this ground. Well, they'll never have a better opportunity. Exactly. And what a time to do it. To go into the outright lead. Put the pressure on the Central Coast, Sydney and Queensland. But they've got a long way to go. Again, they look for the outlet of Rukovic's pace. There's no question that the Jets will still have to be mindful at the back. There's a lot of talk about this league being too violent. I'm just not 100% sure, Robbie, that that was a violent challenge. It was reckless, perhaps, a little bit. But I'm not sure it was an intentionally violent challenge. Well, for me, it's a yellow card at worst. Joel Griffiths has peeled away, but it's 
harmlessly behind from a Perth perspective. There's no doubt he was late. It's a yellow. He's caught him with the trailing leg. He doesn't come in with studs up. I thought it was harsh. Well, five minutes to go in the first half, and we've had one or two talking points. Perth may feel aggrieved. They might have had a penalty, of course, as well. Was the handball intentional or not? The uh, scoreline, top left on your screen, is the only one that matters, and if you're a Jets fan, makes for good reading at the moment. All stayed in play after hitting the corner flag. Zaleski trying to make a nuisance of himself. It's a bit too eager for uh, James Holland. Jordic will just try and walk that one out, which he does. Well, of course, the problem with uh, red cards whether they're issued correctly or incorrectly, is that they do tend to change the nature of games. Perth will now have to play even more on the counter-attack. Spencer's ball, headed by Hoffman. Top to Stanley. Gives it to Tarek Elrich, and there's that uh, lovely little one-touch football that Newcastle have become renowned for in the A-League. Tarek Elrich has suffered uh, no ill effects following that challenge by Rizzo. No, well, it was it really wasn't hurt at all. He did stay on the ground, but as soon as that melee started, he was straight up. That's because it wasn't a bad tackle. It wasn't a lot of contact. There was contact there on Jamie Harmwell, though. He's staying with the two up front for the moment. David Mitchell. Luka are just dropping back into midfield to help out. about 40 metres out. Perth have uh, thrown four white shirts forward. None of them will be required. Oh, not a good ball. Wasted opportunity. Now here come the Jets through bridge. That was beautifully off his man. Pass wasn't quite so impressive. This is Jamie Coyne. Again, the fewer options, of course, up front. Tyler Simpson's in a bit of trouble here, and Joel Griffiths was trying to uh, bear hug him there. Obviously, changed the game now. James Robinson on the ball for Perth. And the struggle now with 10 men, but I'm just not sure whether that combination of Robinson and Jamie Coyne in the middle of the park who was going to cut it for Perth. Before the send off, they were completely dominated in that area. Well, he's a converted striker, James Robinson, but uh, he has played in midfield a lot earlier in his career. He actually uh, developed to play in both positions by Dario Gradi at uh, Crew Alexandra, very fine coach in the English lower leagues. A great school of football, Crew. Produced some uh, fantastic players down the years as well, notably David Platt. David Platt. Robinson is one such product. Maybe not quite at the same level. <laughs> Certainly as a midfielder, that's for sure. Now, here's Joel Griffiths, a second goal for the Jets before the break. Really would uh, put them in a good mood. Of course, Simon Colosmo not travelling. Would have played in the Perth midfield, but it does look like he's played his last game in the Perth colours. And I must say, in my opinion, 
a disappointing end to his Perth career. I do feel he's someone who's always given his best in Perth, and it's just the nature of football that players do move on. Certainly but not by not all of the Perth fans, but by a certain section treated very, very poorly. This is Topo Stanley. Comes off Hoffman. Glory corner as we uh, see the fourth official's board go up. Showing just uh, two additional minutes. I suppose you can blame Dave Mitchell for leaving uh, Simon Colosimo out though. If, as rumoured, he is about to sign for Sydney. Perhaps want to look at one or two other players. Well, they don't want to finish in last place either. That's true. Toto Stanley with the header, flicked on by Harwell, all tied up as we head towards half time. And who else? It's Harwell. Well, it's no surprise, is there? The threat they have from set pieces, and the two biggest threats the goal. Nikolai Topol Stanley, that's just poor defending, just out jumps. Jamie Harnwell, free inside the six yard book, six yard box, sorry. He's not going to miss from there. So Jamie Harnwell gets his eighth of the season and Perth with ten men. They're back on the level terms. There's the header from Nikolai Topol Stanley. They leave Jamie Harnwell unmarked. And he says thank you very much. What a great time to score. What a boost for the ten men. A real shot in the arm. Maybe it's going to get even better. Rukovic a herring down the left channel. In fairness, Jade North kept good pace with him. Didn't allow that option. Cholesky, or rather Cholesky. That might just about do it for the first half, which has been an intriguing one. It certainly ends on a disappointing note for Gary Van Egmont. He'll be absolutely filthy with his defence. I'm sure those two players would have been pinpointed from set pieces, particularly Harnwell. Maybe just as much Nikolai Topper Stanley, who does score from set pieces. Well, that time he didn't score. He certainly set it up for Harnwell. Very soft goal. Well, no shortage of talking points at Energy Australia Stadium. Joel Griffiths putting the Jets ahead. Then the real controversy, Nick Rizzo sending off. Jamie Harwell's eight of the season, though, means that at half-time, teams are all tied up and one apiece. Jets were flying in the Hunter, but uh, the glory have shown their resolve despite the red card shown to Nicky Rizzo. They fought their way back, and Jamie Harwell's goal right on the stroke of half-time has been a real shot in the arm for Dave Mitchell's team. The first half stats, possession-wise, the Jets well on top, 57 to 43%. Time in opposition half, though, interestingly enough, evenly split, five corners, also almost evenly split, just the one offside, 17 fouls, but it's the card count that's probably caused the most consternation, certainly amongst the Perth supporters during the half-time break. That's a red card shown to Nicky Rizzo after 37 minutes. Well, it's certainly been a, a lively game, Robbie Slater. It started off in the fourth minute when Joel Griffiths had, well, was no more probably than a snapshot. Yeah, he should have hit the target, Joel Griffiths. The form is in. It was a good, great set piece. It was a series of set pieces from James Holland. I think that was the second one. Joel Griffiths would be disappointed he didn't at least hit the target. But there was definitely more to come from him. First, we had James Holland. The feature of the first half for me has been his runs from midfield into the penalty box. He really does have a gift of arriving at the right time. What a first touch that was. Pretty good second one, then he just gets crowded out. Really, little other option. Quite possibly trying to fold Joel, Joel Griffiths with that. James Holland again with a set piece. Gets defended. Not a great header out of defence. But what about that for a strike from Noel Spencer? Hits it sweetly on the volley. Skips off the surface. Had Pekovic beaten. It's only strike speed, 125 kilometres off the boot. 111 when it hits the signage at the back of the goal. Here's the first goal for the Jets. 
Well, I'm sure ha, will be a beer bought for Matt Thompson by Joel Griffiths tonight. It's poor defending. Look, four bodies, four white shirts in there from Perth. Great work from Thompson. Tries to come inside Tyler Simpson to his right foot. Then just swivels back on his left, stands it up to the back post. But look at those Perth defenders. All ball watching, all square on, looking at Matt Thompson. And they just completely lost Joel Griffiths, who didn't have to make a run. He just ghosted into space at the back post. Thank you very much. 12, 12 for the season. Yep, which of course is a new Hyundai A-League record. Well done to Joel Griffiths. They've had other chances besides, of course, uh, the Jets, likes of Bridge and Hearfield, and Jason Hoffman here have all been involved. Yeah, Jason Hoffman, pretty decent pick of the well, well covered, ghosted in from the right-hand side where you hadn't seen a lot of ball. Nikolai Topper Stanley doing a pretty good job on him. Here he skips past, he drifts away from Topper Stanley. Left foot strike, and really Pekovic deals with that easily. Here's a quick counter-attack as they hesitate, 35th minute. Mickey Rizzo, ball in behind, the mistake from Durante. We know about the pace of Rukovica. Why doesn't he take an extra metre or two? Hits it far too early. He knows it. Here's the counter-attack. Rizzo, the ball, it's a mistake from Durante. Through the legs and he's away. He needs to take an extra metre. Let's pay some credit though to the pace of Jade North too, who That's what he was tried to about. cut him off at the pass. That was what forced the early shot. This is the big talking point of the first half, no question about it. There's no question also that it's a late chance. There's the referee, look at the yellow card, he pulls it out of his pocket. He put it back in, and after the melee, he's changed his mind and he's given a straight red. Harsh decision when you see that tackle. Here's the goal. Completely against the run of play, right on the stroke at half-time. Set piece, but Gary Van Egmond will be filthy. Nikolai Topper Stanley, far too easy, out muscling Jade North. Kovic has no, no chances, he completely unmarked Hanwell, gets his eighth of the season. And that's the way it is at the break at Energy Australia Stadium. One goal apiece. The attack stats, Jets nine shots on goal, Glory six. 16 times the Jets have had the ball in the Perth penalty area. Nine times the other way around. Eight on-target shots in the entire game so far. And the keepers, well, they've been pretty busy. Well, OK, let's hear what uh, the Jets' supremo, Gary Van Egmond, has to say about that first 45. He's talking now with Robbie Slater. Well, Gary, Gary dominated uh, the first half, conceding just on the uh, stroke of half-time to a set-piece. Disappointing? Yeah, very disappointing. It's a concentration lapse, obviously, and uh, we know they're uh, a big team, and it was uh, very, very disappointing. We had two players out there on the back stick, and uh, we should have done better. 11 against 10. It's not always that easy. Uh, anything uh, you're going to change or switch around in the second half? Yeah, look, we'll uh, go with the same system as what, what we've got at right at this moment, and uh, we'll see how things go. Um, we may change a bit of personnel, uh, but again, we need to win the game. Uh, we want to uh, make sure that uh, the other teams have, uh, have got to earn it this weekend. And uh, if it comes to a situation where we, uh, we, we go with two up front, uh, we definitely will. Thanks, Gary. Thanks very much, Rob. Gary Van Egmont, perhaps unsurprisingly, a little uh, disappointed to concede that late goal, as will be Ante Kovic. It's now just two clean sheets in the last 11 for Newcastle. Which uh, perhaps explains why they've been in the four, really threaten the top two. Also their home form, the Jets, has not been the greatest in recent weeks. They've won only one of their last six matches at this venue. That, of course, was against Adelaide in their last uh, outing. And they've also conceded nine goals in the last five at home now. Five of those have been to the Perth glory. Really got the Indian side over the Newcastle Jets. Looks as though uh, Perth are going to make a change imminently, if not right at the start of the uh, second half. Jimmy Downey is being ushered towards the touchline by uh, Perth officials. Tyler Simpson has uh, been replaced. Jimmy Downey, of course, can play at right fullback where uh, Tyler Simpson was in that first 45, so just a like for like switch and maybe 
Anthony Mitchell reasoning that uh, Jimmy Downey's greater pace will be able to keep the uh, likes of Griffiths and Bridge and Holland more in check. So we're uh, underway. Reminder that uh, a draw or a victory would take the Jets to the top of the Hyundai A-League ladder for the first time this season. And they would love the three points. They desperately want the three points to put the pressure on the others. This is Hoffman with the shot. Well fielded by Jason Pekovic. Experienced custodian, now 35 years of age. Perth Stoffer says he wants another season. And there's equity. No deal has yet been forthcoming by the club. Van Ebel just uh, hinting that there may be slight tweaks of uh, tactics in order to try and break down this Perth rear guard. Maybe that uh, James Holland is push forward a little bit more towards uh, joining Joel Griffiths. More of a 4-4-2 than 4-3-3. Uh, young James Holland called into the Socceroo training camp, of course, this week by Pimper Bank. Uh, very impressed with his form of late. Who hasn't? It's a real star of the future, and of course, almost, almost lost to Australian football. He actually went overseas and trial with a club in Belgium, sporting Moosegrom. Opted to come back to Australia. Griffiths is uh, offside. Flag was raised. Pretty quickly on the uh, far touch line. Nathan Gibson and Rodney Allen, the two uh, assistants to Michael Hester tonight. Just about right. Continues to come down a little bit heavier, or more heavily, I should say, than it was in the first half. It has been a very wet week, not only in Newcastle, but other parts of New South Wales as well. Good for the farmers, not necessarily so good for drawing football crowds in. But it's still a healthy contingent wearing goal tonight. is Noel Spencer. Jay North, again the flag is up against uh, Joel Griffiths. He just went a bit early, Joel Griffiths. Interesting change. Tyler Simpson going off, referee's assistant gets that one absolutely correct. James Downey coming on there will pose a, a new problem for Newcastle. Very, very quick, loves to get forward. Of course, they're 10 men. We'll have to see how many chances he's going to have to get forward. Offsides, three to the Jets. The glory. See, speaking to Gary Van Eckman at half-time, a disappointment on his face, conceding that goal. Just on the stroke of half-time. Sucker punch, really. Well, it's quite obvious, the danger men. And the set pieces. Really only those two, I think there was one other in there. The touch was off Mark Bridge. Not enough power to beat Pekovic. No, he just took that off. He's just about to pull the trigger. It's far too hard. That ball's going to skip away to Kovic. Too straight. Joel Griffiths was just about to pull the trigger from that cross. Mark Bridge has got a foot to the ball and took it off him. He's quick down, but he won't keep that one in. Ball whipped in with pace. There's Mark Bridge. He's probably got every right to go for that. 
Well, Mark Bridges' uh, last goal from open play was against uh, the Central Coast Mariners last October. Did score a penalty against uh, Wellington, but did out of touch in front of goal. Whether that uh, speculation over the move to Sydney is perhaps just got to him a little bit. This is Jamie Coyne, meantime. Fouled by Spencer. Pretty straightforward. Rukovic up, only Harmwell in the middle. Just slipped at the vital moment. Top of Stanley. Coin. Seleski. Harmwell. Well, Perth were looking uh, pretty threatened until that moment. Look at that, they win the ball in a good area there, Newcastle, far too slow. 11 men, what you need to do against the 10 is move the ball quickly. Elrich, who could certainly move quickly. Joel Griffiths having to track back from an offside position. It's a bit tougher for Hearfield to control. Now Bridge. Spencer. Tarek Elrich drives one, it's not a bad try at all. That's a great strike from all of, what, 32, 33 metres. Got it out of his feet, set it up nicely. One thing on his mind, good technique, keeps his head down, plenty of power on the shot. And Pekovic scrambling to his right-hand side. Tarek Elrich was a goalkeeper until he was 13, so he'll uh, appreciate the save too. Here's the corner. Bridge. That was travelling, appeals for handball, not heeded. Oh, I'd like to see that again. The arms have gone up. That was travelling as well from Mark Bridge. Still the Jets press. We've got two footballs on the field at the moment. One's just been returned onto the park by the fans. Meantime, Glory on a great counter here. Seleski, and he had both Downey and Rukovic in support left and right. He chose to go on his own. Real opportunity there for the glory. They still be. Top of Stanley. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> still made it. <laughs> that was with the wrong leg, for sure. Well, he's lucky it went to a white shirt because that was going to be a candidate for a certain segment of total football this week. Now Topol Stanley's been caught out of position. Coin has got that well. Lucky Ricochet goes the Jets' way. This is a real chance for Newcastle and Hoffman just no, he's couldn't make the decision. No, he's wasted. He's got himself in two minds. Whether to hit it, whether to cross it. And in the end, he did neither. Coin dives in. He wasn't great defending. Gets a bit of luck here. Really, that's a nothing ball across from Nearfield as it comes inside. Now here's the strike coming up from Bridge. And that was travelling. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, that's for me, that's a penalty. Well, maybe that evens it up because uh, Perth thought they might have had one in the first half. Yeah, but he can see the ball coming clearly there. And his hands have gone up. That's a penalty. The one that they claimed. Spencer had no idea. The ball was behind him. Oh well. <laughs> I'll probably get in trouble for my uh, analysing as usual. The referee was well positioned. Well, as with all these decisions, it depends on how you see it. As with the send-off as well. It's a game of opinions, Robbie, and you're entitled to yours. <laughs> Change for the Jets. Jason Hoffman's night's work is done. Adam De Puzzo's is about to start. Left out of the team at the start of the game. He was uh, certainly at fault for Mariner's goal last weekend, so maybe he paid the price for that. His uh, free kick floated in towards Hayden Fox, of all people, who wanted the corner. And I, again, I thought he had a point there, Hayden Fox. Didn't think that came off the ginger bots. Oh, 
Perth are just keeping the Jets honest, even with 10 men, which is a sign of their improvement. Putso getting involved. Now Spencer. It's a rather uh, wasteful ball by Noel Spencer. Well, the Perth are keeping them honest because of Newcastle. They haven't started well. Controlled by Zaleski. He's working hard in fairness to atone for his error. That's another wasted ball. It's just rushed. I need to play that ball. Spencer, no, Spencer played one just a minute ago. This time it was Matt Thompson. In fairness, I'm more inclined to give uh, Billy Zaleski a bit of credit there. He raced back pretty hard and at least uh, put Matt Thompson within. Two minds. He's a big man, Jamie Harnwell. <laughs> He's climbing all over his back. Jade North. Thirty-two metres out. I'm pretty sure this will be uh, chipped up towards the far post, unless Nikolai Topol Stanley is actually going to belt it. After Seleski's touch. Got a good uh, left foot, but he's very quickly charged down by Troy Hairfield. To rapturous applause from the home support. This is Jamie Coyne. His father John was uh, Australian international back in the 1970s. Jamie might uh, still get representative honours. He's in the Socceroo training camps as well, of course. There's another man hoping for an international cap, Andy Durante. Bridge. Elrich. Field. Holland and Griffiths waiting, might not need them. That was a very good run indeed by Troy Hairfield. Well, it was more positive when it skipped inside, dropped the shoulder, went past the defender. Here he squares up to Nikolai Topper Stanley, just a little outside step over. This time he makes up his mind, he's going for that near post. He's just trying to get some power on it. Tekovic. Low down to his left-hand side. Jets 14th shot. Must have taken the touch too. Jewel Vecchoni partially clear. Still Lake Q up waiting for the chance. Downey only partially clear. Bridge tries to drive it. Everybody back for Perth glory. Nikolai Topol Stanley. That was a good uh, physical tussle. That was a strong boy, Troy Hairfield. 
from uh, Tamworth, just up the road from here. I'm afraid he wasn't any match there for the rather taller Nikolai Totostan. This is Jamie Harmer. Solder's been a bit short. You know, Julvich almost put it into the second tier of the Eastern Grandstand, and there's perhaps the most miserable man inside Energy Australia Stadium at the moment, Nicky Rizzo. No doubt reflecting on his first half red card. Well, funnily enough, it only seems to have stiffened Glory's resolve. Well, they've performed better since he's gone. It's a better ball by Noel Spencer. Hearfield popping up on the right again. He's had one or two good little moments down that uh, right flank in recent minutes. Spencer, Griffiths, I think it actually might have hit the shoulder. It's just not quite working in the final third at the moment for the Jets. Would you be uh, tempted to make another change if you were Gary Van Egmond? He does have Scott Tunbridge uh, set on the subs bench. Well, I think if it stays like this, it will go with two up front. Possibly take, up a, take out a defender. It's only the one up front there really now with Jamie Harmel. There's still a, a back four in place. Well, you don't need four at the back. Holland still doing great work in the midfield. Puto didn't quite anticipate it. No, but he's slipped, hasn't he? A lot of the players slipping tonight. Rukovitsar is uh, offside meantime. They look for Hearfield. Two weight in the middle. Holland tries to get there. Very nearly did. In fact, he must have done. It's a goal kick. Well, they did well there. They dragged them around. Got it out wide, nice and early. Nice ball from Noel Spencer. Hearfield one touch. Whipped it in Holland with one of those customary runs from midfield. Confirmation of the crowds. It's a good one too. 16,212. It's only a couple of hundred shy of the best figure this season. That's we'll uh, take Newcastle's average this season to over 13,000. That's a great crowd considering the weather we've had here today. Touched by Joel Griffiths. Deputso, that's the ball through. Bridges away, 1-1. One one. What a finish! 2-1 Newcastle. And Mark Bridges' goal drought is over. And what a time to end the drought. The ball broke down. Well, inside their own half, Newcastle. Heerfield had a poor touch. He got the ball back to Spencer. And from there, it was one touch stuff. A lovely ball from Deputza here. They get caught squares. Hayden Fox, I think his first touch here isn't great, but he readjusts well. And with the outside of the right boot, a very good finish from Pekovic there. I think that one's not a great touch, but he readjusts, doesn't hit it with the left foot, but really flicks it with the outside of the right boot. And what a time to end, you end the goal drought. Kovic knows how important that is. They go back up to 34 points. A real good finish at the end of a real good move. They might be cheering him next season if he pulls on the blue shirt of Sydney, Mark Bridge, but they're cheering him now. What an important goal that could be, not only in the context of this game, but the race for the title itself. Newcastle back in pole position for now. Here's Downey. Perth have come from behind once with 10 men. And they do so again. They're trying to avoid the spoon, remember? They dare not lose and allow Wellington an opportunity to get above them. 
Oh, what they've got to do now, they're 11 against 10, they've got the goal advantage. Worst thing you can do now is get a, a bout of nerves and sit back. Keep going forward. Lutz uh, brought the crowd back into play as well because they first started to go a little quiet. Bridges fourth goal of the season is uh, 12th in total in a Jets jersey oh, what they did well there though Newcastle talked about the need to move the ball quickly it was a real one-touch move ended up with the goal from Mark Bridge you feel hesitating there that was a good crossfield ball from Matt Thompson it traveled a long way you just stood his ground and the time the ball bounced, it was far too late. He needed to get his body behind it. Good take, James Holland. Again, they work it out to Harefields. That's a whoops. It's never there, the cross. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his last action as well. Yep, Scotty Tumbridge is going to replace him. He's, he's been done okay on his return, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah, he's done. He's, he's been busy. The end product hasn't always been there, as was his last final cross, but he certainly worked very hard. Some fresh legs. Good to see Gary Van Egmont obviously had this in mind because Tunbridge was warming up for really since the second half kicked off. And he had this in mind to, to make this change. He hasn't changed his mind because of the goal. That's a good move. Their appearance for uh, Scott Tumbridge, just his fifth in a Jets jersey. He's actually told he could leave, of course, uh, earlier on in the campaign. But he's uh, battled it out and... and he's got an important part to play tonight. Maybe in the final series now. Nikita Rukovitsa is uh, going to be taken off by Dave Mitchell. Leo Bertos to be brought on. What do you make of that, Robbie? A strange move, maybe he's just shaking his head there, he might have a little injury. Because if there's one player who could worry that Newcastle defence with his pace is Rukovica. I think you saw from his reaction now, I think he's got carrying something. Bertos is quick as well, so he'll pose a threat. New Zealand international, of course, Leo Bertos. Rumours linking him with a move uh, back across the Tasman to Wellington Phoenix. And he says, at least in the press, that he'd rather stay in Perth. And uh, you're right about Rukovica, incidentally. He's uh, having a bag of ice supplied to this one part of his leg. And it's a shame for David Mitchell because he's the one player in an offensive sense really going to cause problems there's Leo Burtz's first involvement two Jets players go for the same ball he's going to foul on Durante too there's the uh, right ankle of Nikita Rukovica he's receiving some treatment What's that stuff they're putting on there, Rob? <laughs> the magic red stuff. Plenty of that in my time, but from that, there's obviously a cut there, so he hasn't rolled the ankle. It's obviously a kick. Is that the stingy stuff? Yeah, it does sting. Well, again, Michael Hester attracting the ire of the players. This time it's uh, the Jets. Cheers. They've tried to be positive though when they've gone forward first glory, for which you have to give them credit, especially with 10 men. Now, no offside against Tunbridge if he can get there. He timed his run to perfection. Oh, he should have taken that. Really clear, great run. Good decision from the referee's assistant. He made the run at the perfect timing and early. The ball was there to be brought down at this level. Another lovely 
touch from Joel Griffiths. Likewise, too, from uh, James Holland. Bit of showboating going on from the Jets. Very confident mood. Elric swings it in just too high for Bridge. Now that's better from Newcastle. Pressing right down in Perth to regain possession with Nikolai Topper Stanley results in, results in them getting a throw in. Tell you what, even with the second Jets goal though, there's not quite the atmosphere that normally here is for Jets home games. You just sense there's a bit of nervousness around the place. They know what's at stake, they know how tight this race for the title is. Well, they've done so well to put themselves in this position. As they looked for a while there that they were going to drop out of it. Great win on the Central Coast last week. Soleski, it's a decent ball in towards Harmwell. <laughs> Nothing else for Jamie Harmwell to do, he's done well to get ahead on to that. Well, it's all about being professional now, concentration in Newcastle. Third goal though, would certainly be the icing on the cake, and Scott Tunbridge tried to provide it. Confident. A couple of touches. Set it up, hit it on the half volley. It's the ball bounce there, touch on the thigh. Just swerves away. Starts to fall again at uh, Energy Australia Stadium. Oh, Perth going to rain on Newcastle's parade for a second time. Jorbich. Turned away from trouble, got the throw in. Good, steady first season at the back for Perth Glory, Dino Jorvic. There's Joel Griffiths. A little bit quiet in the second half. Well, he's been well marked in the centre of defence by Hayden Fox and Jorvic. 12 goals. Outstanding season. And Joel Griffiths. But he'll be, well, he's had a bit of a pop at his teammates in a nice sort of way in the local press. About someone else standing up and getting some goals. Well, Mark Bridge has done that. Yeah, so James Holland's been doing it too in exactly. recent weeks. Now they're going for their third straight win, which would equal their best run, I think, since the Hyundai Air League's inception. Of course, Hyundai Air League started on this very ground match against Adelaide in the first season where, well, no surprise, the away team winning that one. Carl... <laughs> Twas ever thus, Robbie. <laughs> Carl Vick getting the winner. Here's Elrich. That would have perhaps been the winner. Tunbridge. Again away by Julvich. Spencer. Tunbridge's first touch a bit heavy. Tries to redeem it unsuccessfully. Now Bertos. Perth trying to get some numbers forward. Jimmy Downey with the cross. Orn Kovic just about managed to hang on. That's a good challenge. Joel Griffiths doesn't think so. Topper Stanley. Seleski. Back to Topper Stanley. 
Armwell jogs almost nonchalantly towards the penalty spot. You know where he's supposed to be. Now is the break on through James Holland. The pedestrian, the Jets getting forward on that occasion. And they'll work it left to Thompson. That puts up. Hopeful shot, really. Cut him back off the shins of James Robinson. Great pass, Mark Spencer. He's hit some beautiful passes with the laces tonight. Low like that. Good passing, though, by the Jets. Tariq Elrich! Oh! Off the woodwork, Petkovic barely moved. He didn't move. I think he thought it was going wide. I'll tell you what, it just reminded me. A certain goal from Armadil Rich, his brother. Similar sort of position, bending it in to that sort of area. Very unlucky. He's had a couple of great strikes tonight. That being the pick of them. Petkovic was rooted to the spot. Now, mistake by the glory. Bridge could finish it here. Orkham long to control. He did very, very well, Mark Bridge. Thompson slides it through. Oh, oh. James Holland just couldn't control it. No, I don't think he was expecting it. He was on his heels. Clever ball. They were two on one in the, in the penalty box. Two great chances to finish off the glory. Tarek Elrich has never scored for the Jets. Won't come much closer than that. They're knocking at the door, the home team. Trying to finish the job off. Here they go again. Too far. Poor clearance from uh, Jason Takovic, really shanked that one. Certainly did again. Plenty of height. It didn't go very far. Almost had snow on it <laughs> and it came down. <laughs> we have most types of weather in this part of the world this week. Well, this match still balanced on a knife edge. Jets can't quite finish Perth off. Perth still posing the odd question going forward. Tim Verbeek and Rob Barn and Graham Arnold all looking on. Three Dutchmen. Oh, sorry, two Dutchmen. The Brains Trust. And an adopted one. Yep. <laughs> in their hands and their brains does the immediate future of Australian football lie all will be revealed February the 6th or at least the first instalment that's what I was talking about in the pre-game show about Tarek Elrich found himself one-on-one -on -one there with Bertos talking of which here is the Kiwi flyer Hayden Fox last, although he disagrees. I thought it came off job for <laughs> It could have been closer. James Holland. Keeps it moving is the shout, and the Jets do. Thompson. Bridge waiting for the ball to come on to him, rather than uh, going after it. So uh, perhaps allows the glory to break. Leo Bertos, Harmwell and Seleski wait in the middle. Oh, and Harmwell very nearly got there. There's an eerie silence that comes up for Energy Australia Stadium. Whenever Perth get in the final third, you can hear the fingernails being chewed. difference going to play a key part you would think over the weekend. Newcastle
Newcastle playing against 10 men. I know it's great just to get those three points given the circumstances, but try and get some more goals, boost the goal difference. Well, they're plus four at the moment. Queensland, of course, are plus six. The other two by uh, memory, plus four, Sydney and Central Coast. Oops, couldn't be tighter. Seleski's ball in, all oh, free header. Real chance for Dino Djulvic. Should have done better. It's poor marking. Good ball in. Ball played in to the back post. Good jump. Should have done better. Meantime at the other end, here's James Holland past Jamie Coyne. And again, they just can't finish off the opportunity. More frustration for the home faithful. Um, final ball. Did so well in the box, eliminated the defender. He's trying to play it into Joel Griffiths. I think he's got every right from that angle to go for the far post. Low and hard, even side footed. Joel Griffiths was never there to be found, he was marked. All rumblings of discontent from the stands. And that's indicative of the tension of the occasion, too. Turs are not dead yet. It's a good clearance by Jade North. He's sitting very deep, Newcastle. So that ball went out and up towards Djurvic. They're just walking out of the fence. Gary Van Egmond's up there. Nervous looking faces around Energy Australia. As I said in the first half, Robbie, I wonder if there's some uh, nervous faces sat around various uh, dressing rooms at the moment. Sydney, Central Coast, Queensland. Newcastle can maintain their advantage. Pressure's back on them. It certainly is. They are tough games. Central Coast form, as we know, five points out of the last 21 hasn't been good. I do expect them to beat Wellington tomorrow. Well, Wellington, incentive with Perth losing here to avoid the wooden spoon. So that's going to be an interesting one. And Sydney and Queensland's games are both very difficult. Melbourne in flying form at the moment. Adelaide at home preparing for the Asian Champions League. This is Seleski. Plenty of time to measure the cross. Oh, well, the obvious target. Even that Caravan Egmont's filling the tension. It's great, though, isn't it, for a finale to the season? Or before the playoffs for the minor premiership. Here's the chance, maybe, to finish it. That's the wrong option. It's a good block, too, by Julbic. Three on two, though, at Tunbridge, completely unmarked on the outside of him. Again, the final third. Quality not good enough. And Jimmy Downing has got pace to burn. We know that. Bridge is trying to stay with him. Jade North is quick, too. Downey does get there, though. It's a decent centre, too. Over the top by Jamie Coyne, it took a deflection off Durante. Or rather, Tarek Elrich, and it'll be a corner. That's what about the pace of Downing? Downing, absolutely frightening pace down the right-hand side because Jade North is very, very quick as well. He's gone past two of them, he goes past Bridge first, then he just backs himself. I love that, when you've got pace, use it. There he does, he gets that ball in. That is a great challenge from Tarek Elrich. He'd come across from his right full-back position. There's Jamie Coyne, as he pulled the trigger. Castle fence, hearts were in their mouths. Seleski's corner, it had uh, gone out of play before it came back in. That's a disappointment for Perth. And certainly, Jimmy Downey's heels were smoking. Here's the uh, third and final change for the glory. And it's uh, Jamie Harwell who's going to be withdrawn. So. Both he and Rukovic have been replaced. Jerry Carpe. 
who uh, incidentally spent a little spell trialling at uh, the Newcastle Jets a few months back. Gets about uh, five minutes or so to perhaps save the day for Perth. Cool customer. Tombridge couldn't quite get there. Top or Stanley could. Here's Carpe's first involvement. Big, strong striker. Good turn, too. Seleski. Well, if they'd had that one extra body, of course, they're down to ten and have been for the best part of an hour. Might just have made that chance pay. Will the Jets make the pay? Holland. Another backfield. Bridge. Matt Thompson. Two waiting. Too much. Final cross. ball again. Good movement. A lot of promise in that attack, but final ball wasn't good enough. Yet again. Thompson, Sydney born, but uh, well, he's a Newcastle boy through and through these days. He'd certainly love to uh, get some revenge on Perth. He's part of the Parramatta team, beat in the last ever NSL Grand Final by the Glory. Carpe, Liberian born, six feet five inches tall. So it's not going to get any easier for the Jets' defence despite Harmwell going off. Joel Griffiths. Thompson. Which played uh, the dummy. Now Seleski. Trying to slip it through for Carpe. Well done, Andy Durante for the Jets. Ticket away for Perth. It'll be creeping very, very slowly for the Jets. They're not too far away from going to the top of the ladder for the first time this season. And what a time to do it. After your final game, put the pressure, the onus, back on Queensland, Sydney, Central Coast. What a job Gary Van Egmond has done at this football club. Bottom of the table when he took over, of course, last season. Led them to the preliminary final. Are they going to go one better this time around? One minute of normal time to go. Plus whatever stoppages. Joel Griffiths, who might just be filling that tight calf in this second half. He's not been anywhere near as influential. Wasted a few seconds there. That's uh, the yellow ticket for his trouble. A pretty amiable discussion, which uh, ends in smiles. Ends in Joel Griffiths's fifth yellow card of the season. Another change is going to be made by uh, Gary Van Egmont just to run down the clock. As much as anything else, Noel Spencer is going to be withdrawn and uh, Stuart Nusharlik will play out the last couple of minutes. 
referee has been alerted and uh, that was a almighty delay. Now eventually, Noel Spencer will take his lead. Well, even those who play for the Mariners can uh, eventually win favourite in this part of the world. He's uh, won them over with some pretty hard-working performances in the centre of the park. Here's uh, one of their own, though, of course. Local-born Stuart Mucharlik. Lots of rumours linking him with moves elsewhere in the close season. We just caught sight there of the fourth official's board, which registered two minutes, of which we've played one already. I'm sure Michael Hester will uh, add on at least another 30 seconds for that uh, Jets change. Mucharlik's first touch. Nothing stupid now for the Jets. That will be the message from Gary Van Egmont. That's a huge bomb up and under from Tarek Elwich. That's a massive cheer. They're edging towards the finish line, the Jets. Maybe just time for one final opportunity for Perth Glory. Here's Jimmy Downey. Up and under. Is won by the Jets. Bertos couldn't quite bring it down. Still the danger, not 100% gone. Robinson to Topo Stanley. Two minutes are up now. Michael Hester looks at the watch. The Jets are nearly there. Seleski, desperate to get the cross away, but he can't do so. That might be that. Not just yet. Another look at the watch. Downey. There's too much on it from Jamie Coy, and surely the Newcastle Jets are heading to the top of the Hyundai A-League. It's been hard work at times, the ten men of Perth have made the battle all the way. But the result is confirmed, Newcastle, top of the ladder just at the right time they've also broken their Perth hoodoo and by doing so they've laid down the gauntlet to Queensland to Sydney and to the Central Coast the message from the hunter being catch as if you can full time at Energy Australia Newcastle Jets 2 Perth Glory 1 well here's all the goals on attention riddle nights at Energy Australia Stadium. Great work to create the first goal on the left-hand side for Joel Griffiths. But Perth hit back right on the stroke of the interval. Top or Stanley winning the initial challenge. Jamie Harmwell gobbled up the chance. But a great move to win the points for the Jets. And a great finish too by Mark Bridge. His first goal from open play since October. And a goal worthy of winning the points. So, celebration time all around in Newcastle. Let's hear from the man who's uh, just broken the record for scoring goals in the Hyundai A-League regular season. Joel Griffiths is with Robbie Slater. Well, first of all, Joel, uh, congratulations on breaking the record. The 12 goals, first time ever done. Yeah, as you can see, uh, it's a good achievement. You know, I've worked pretty hard in the off-season and um, I'm just reaping the rewards at the moment. And uh, I guess you've now just sent out the message to the other three sides, Central Coast, Sydney, Queensland, catch us if you can. That's it, you know, we've done our job. You know, I'd just like to say good luck to Archie, good luck to Travis and good luck to Smelty. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, what about tonight? Wasn't all easy. Uh, you know, they equalised just on the stroke of half time, 10 men, but you went out there and got the points just the same. Sometimes it's our worst enemy, you know, when a player gets sent off and we've got an extra man, you know. Uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, the other team tends to lift. Um, but full credit to Perth, they kept on coming at us. Um, it was an easy game um, and uh, just pretty happy with the t uh, three points.
And what, what's the message to the fans here at Energy Australia for the coming finals? You know, look at the weather tonight, you know, they turn up, I think it was 16,000, so, you know, it's a credit to them and uh, this is for them. Well done, Joel, congratulations. Yeah, well done indeed. Bend it like Griffo is the message from the squadron. Good on him. They love him here. Let's have a look at the uh, attack stats. The Jets, 24 shots on goal. The Glory had 12 of the road. It was that sort of a game, really open at times. 32 balls into Glory's penalty area for the home team, 21 the other way round, and 14 on target shots in the entire game. As you can see, the two goalkeepers, Jason Pekovic and Ante Kovic, were pretty busy throughout. Now let's uh, confirm the Hyundai A-League ladder for you. Newcastle Jets' regular season work, of course, is done. And they've done their job pretty well. Top of the pile, three points clear. The other three teams, well, they've got to match that result, at least if they're going to overhaul them. That's about it, though, from the Hunter Valley. Very tense night. Perth will have some questions to ask, no doubt, about the send-off. One or two of the penalty appeals as well, no doubt. But it's ended in smiles for the Jets, at least, and for Joel Griffiths. From me, Simon Hill, from Romy Slater, from all the Fox Sports football team, it's goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.